Everybody's beautiful in their own way. Hello, my gardening friends. Welcome to your favorite garden show brought to you each week for your enjoyment. I'm Dr. John, your host. And today I have a guest on that has been on a couple times before. And he has done such good work. And I've seen some of his work before. Greg, Greg Design, OK? They've been on, and he's going to show us some great uh, plantings that he's done. But I'm not going to have them on until I show you the problem of the week. And they'll be on right after the break. But stay tuned, folks, because this is going to be a good show. You're going to enjoy it very much. Now, first thing I'm going to show you is this right here. I want my cameraman to zoom in on You know, folks, you're going to be probably building a flower bed or digging out for a patio or whatever it is you may do. You don't know the formula, how much soil to buy or how much soil to remove. And there's a written formula, and I'm going to put it right up here like this. All right? Take and multiply the area by the inches of depth required. OK? And then divide that number by 10, and divide that it by 27. For example, let's say you got a 20 by 40 area, and you want to raise it up about, uh, let's say you're going to raise it 2 inches deep, 20 by 40. OK, 20 by 40 is 800 times 2 is 1,600. Take that 1,600 and divide it by 10. And it comes out to 160 divided by 27 is 5.9. What do you need? How much soil do you call up and order from the garden center? Six cubic foot of soil, because you got 5.9 cubic feet, about six. The same way is true for your removing soil, that same formula. Multiply the area by the inches in depth that you required. Divide that number by 10. Then divide that by 27, and it comes out to the right amount. You may say, well, what mathematically, would you divide that by, uh, by 12 or another? No, soil shrinks. OK, this is the right formula. I hope you wrote that down. All right. Now, another little thing I want to remember is this. When your boxwoods have this look to them right here, if I can get this out here quickly. There we are. See how these boxwoods got a little bit of a round, the leaves are cupping? See how that's cupping? That's boxwood psyllid. And that means that you've got to do something with those boxwood. Here's another one. Hold it still, John. There you are. That's boxwood psyllid on that. And then on these, I'm not, I was going to take and separate these leaves, but it's going to take too long, and I don't want to steal too much time for my guest. But these leaves are loaded with leaf miners on this boxwood when, you're, when they all look wrinkled up and brown and cruddy looking. What do you do? Well, go into your garden center and pick up some seven, spray with seven or melathion in about mid-May for boxwood psyllid and the leaf miner. Melathion or seven, and that works wonderful. By the way, if you want to solve a lot of problems in your garden, go to your bookstore and find out if you can get this book right here. This book here called uh, Diseases and Pests on Ornamental Plants, the fifth edition by Perone. That book will tell you all about the garden and all the problems, where there's roses, lawns, boxwoods, trees, shrubs, perennials, and annuals, and you name it. OK? Hey, let's take 30 seconds out for a thank you message. And when we come back, get ready to enjoy a great show on great designs. OK? Stay tuned. The funding for this program was made possible by a grant from Great Designs Incorporated. Great Design holds a Class A contractor's license and has provided landscape designs and installation in Northern Virginia for 23 years. Great Design provides all phases for the client, custom designs, proper plants, and professional installation, regardless of size, ranging from townhouses to estates and even commercial projects. For more information about Great Designs, call 703-368-7539. Folks, if you just tuned in, you're watching Gardening News and Views with Dr. John. And today, I have a couple of gentlemen coming on to talk about landscape designs. And they should be here right about now. Great uh, Here, come on right in. Steve, come right in, please. Welcome, Steve. Hello. Did you bring Dr. your partner John, with yes you? Yes, I did. Yes. Brian How are you doing, Brian? Glad John, to see you see again. Glad to see sure you. Sure enough. Pull up a chair and stool here. <laughs> Let's talk. Uh, I was looking forward to having you guys come on because you did such a great job uh, last year, and I liked some of your designs, and I thought, well, Thank you. I'd like to have you on again. But some people haven't seen you before on the show, 
And so let's t tell us a little bit about your company. Uh, who is uh, Grig Designs? And I'll say, I said it right that time. That's correct, you did. Uh, Grig Design, we are a landscape design build company. We're going into our 24th year. We deal mainly with residential design, mm -hmm. build, installation work. Mm -hmm. And uh, myself, my degree is in horticulture. Uh, I graduated from Virginia Tech in 1976. And some exciting news for me is that uh, this year in March, I was given the uh, Department of Horticulture, um, College of Agriculture, uh, Outstanding Alumni Award for 2009-2010. Oh, wow, yeah, so how about that? Really filled. And Brian, yeah. I also went to Virginia Tech. Um, I graduated with a degree in environmental resource management, uh -huh. and I find that helps me uh, with my designs, not only in uh, creating uh, useful spaces, but also how to use the, the, the elements in the garden that are already there, whether it's the exposure of the garden, um, things like uh, you know, line of sight, trying to mm -hmm. fit the garden into the environment. Well, you've been with Steve for quite a while. Uh, 13 years now. 13 yeah. years, yeah. Absolutely. Right. You make a very good team. Uh -huh. Almost read now, each other's minds. Now, when you, when you uh, design, you mostly work in, in Virginia, or, or would you go into Maryland or D.C. and so forth, or most of you in, in Virginia? We've stayed uh, strictly in, D, uh, excuse me, in, in Virginia. Yeah. We used to go to Maryland and D.C., but there's, quite frankly, we decided to concentrate in the northern Virginia area. And there's plenty to do because yeah. there's plenty of new homes out, right. all the way out to Winchester. <laughs> right, and what's very interesting is now we find ourselves back into the Fairfax, North Arlington, Falls yeah. Church areas, in addition to areas like Gainesville, uh, Fredericksburg, Loudoun, and such. Mm -hmm. So it's been very good in that we go back and see our work that we did sometimes over 20 years ago. Uh, matter of fact, uh, over 50% of everything we do is repeat and referral work, and my That's work... That's the best kind of... Uh, that, Absolutely. That's a, that's and the last year, I think 70% of my work was repeat and referral, and Brian's was, I think, 60%. 60. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So we're very thrilled about well, that. Well, what are we going to talk about today? Well, what we thought we'd talk about today is two things that Brian and I have sort of developed over the years, and we call it design for the human scale and horticultural engineering, which is something we feel is overlooked a lot and in the landscape and doing site analysis and landscape design build. Hmm. On there, particularly for residential sites that are either either new or old uh -huh. on, on that. And so if you'd like to go into some of the pictures. Well, you brought some slides, Absolutely. I hope. All right, well, Absolutely. let's see what you've got there then. Okay. Uh, again, we'll go back and forth on these as we okay. go through. But we, one of the things that we do with working for the client is what we try and do is design for the human scale, which basically means design for the client and the person uh -huh. on there. There's some pictures here which show some work of small-scale landscaping, which many times can be much harder to incorporate into a house or a setting than with a large-scale landscaping. Mm -hmm. The one on the left, uh, Brian did. Actually, I'll let Brian go into it's that. It's a, a small urban garden, just, a, just the front of a, of a townhome condominium. Uh, mm -hmm. So very limited space, very severe slope. Uh, we were able to create a, a little retaining wall uh, just some really low maintenance plantings that uh, don't require any water, very disease and pest resistant. So something that was something we could put in for the client, they wouldn't have to fuss over. It was a you know one-time installation, and it offers them something to look at year-round. Townhouses are a challenge, aren't they? They sometimes? certainly are. And the because second of the, of the spaces that they have, and if they got children, it's even harder. You, you're exactly right. The second picture there is a project we did out in Loudoun County, where uh, we had to combine you know patio space, living area, open lawn. Uh, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, creating some nice perimeter gardens. So you, if it's uh, a challenging site, it's usually something we've seen and we can uh, address, you know, with right. many different What's ways. What's the next slide there? Yeah. Actually, the next slide was a good slide on horticultural engineering, if you will, where there was a steep <laughs> grade, <laughs> drainage issues, uh, heavy compacted clay soil, traffic flow. And we were able to cut into the hill and put in a combination thin weather face veneer dry stack stone wall with ADS pipe and gravel and such behind it and create a pathway to get the client from point A to point B, which was the front of the house to the back of the house, uh -huh. in a very tight area and to alleviate any soil compaction and mud basically by incorporating a dry creek bed because there was a big water and drainage issue in that area too. Mm -hmm. And if we can go to the next, next slide. Next slide, okay. Uh, again, this is a combination of what we're trying to talk about with design for the human scale or a uh, small scape landscaping. The one on the left and the one in the middle are Brian's. Uh, you know, just a, a, a simple outdoor um, built-in barbecue, um, not over the top, no um, uh -huh. dishwashers or 
no. you know, additional uh, ovens, but uh, you definitely was, you know, scaled to that space. Um, a nice home in Arlington, uh, but limited lot lines. So, yeah. you know, you want to make sure that they have all the amenities. Uh, the picture in the middle there is a nice courtyard patio we built in, an, again, really constricted space, but uh, I feel that we created the illusion of a lot more space in an area that really is only about 18 feet by 12 feet deep. And it looks like those beds are, uh, could also be benches. Absolutely, and that, that is that what they're designed for. That way you save a lot of yeah. furniture, because small spaces, furniture takes up room. Exactly. But if you design your bed in such a way that the wall is actually a, a place to Precisely. sit. Precisely, that's exactly right. what that was yeah. designed to do. Good idea. And the last picture on the right is just a small town, uh, excuse me, a single family backyard where we actually did repair work on a pond and a fountain and just to incorporate the sound and movement in the landscaping with water on uh -huh. this scenario. And a small sitting boulder for the client to sit there and, and just to absorb the whole area. Very uh, private area in the back of a busy area, uh -huh. suburban area in a falls church. Well now, um, uh, Steve, would you, would you uh, supply the fish for them too or do you go to no we don't, uh, you don't do get that. Into that we don't get into that but we will be able to repair the pond or work on a pond the and water and features and yeah. such mm -hmm. into there one of the main things we found is with the water is the sound of the water that the client really likes That's right. yeah. there. Uh, if we can go to the next slide on this now Dr. John this is what's really exciting for us and what we really get into is what we're terming Horticultural engineering, and this is something that's been overlooked, we feel, in talking to the residential client and even commercial clients over the years. And horticultural engineering, some of the basics, and we have different slides for all these things that we'd like to point out, but it provides intelligent site analysis. When you go out and meet a client and mm -hmm. listen, listen to them, what they want to do and create, and then check out the basics, again, the bare minimum is exposure, north, south, east, west, microclimate recognition, right. uh, s reflected heat off a house, wind tunnel. Uh, these are some of the things that, as Brian and I, when we go out, are some of the first things as we're listening to the, the client is look uh, at and try to absorb, to start from the, uh, the basic, building a proper mm -hmm. landscape design build project for that client. If we go to the next slide, we actually have some samples um, to help illustrate this. The first picture there is a, uh, basically we did the front walk up and the homeowner added the portico. That was a southern exposure. So the front of their house got extremely hot. Mm -hmm. uh, simply by adding the shade, you, you know, their door didn't get swelteringly hot um, when they mm -hmm. were coming in and out. It was actually a dangerous situation. Um, so that would be a microclimate you want to address. Uh, in the landscape. Um, you Some know, people don't ever think about yeah. that. No, they don't. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Large shade trees or um, plantings along the side of your house can affect your heating and cooling costs and actually right. save you money. Um, so these are all things that should be taken into, into account when you're discussing a design with your, with your client. If we can go to the next slide, we have even more um, uh, items we try to at least address on every uh, project, uh, which includes soil evaluation, uh, what's the grade? Are there drainage issues? Um, is that water sloping away from the house? And if it's not, how can we effectively arrest it and take it away so it's not take causing it away any from the house, damage yeah, yeah, yeah. to the foundation? Mm -hmm. And again, we have some more samples of that if you want to go to the next well, slide. And the other thing, too, is the grading, the drainage, elevation. And sometimes that's just not new construction. When we get into older homes that yeah. have changed over the years or somebody's added something, the neighbors add something that's an older area, like 40, 50 years old, and third or fourth resident in there. You're dealing with the areas where uh, people have started changing the water patterns and drainage patterns, soil compaction. Oh, that reminds me of something. And that's uh, very important in the analysis. That reminds me when they build these great big, uh, I call them mansions, mm -hmm. next to the houses that have been there for 30 years. Okay. That could change the drainage. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, that's, mm -hmm. you don't even think about that. And all of a sudden, there's a great big house next to you that's like a, a hotel. Right, mm -hmm. and you're right, and that we pride ourselves on being able to come out and solve with, our, with 24, with being in business 24 years. I've been in the industry uh, 30. Brian's been in the industry 20. Over 20 uh, now, now yeah. there. What you can offer a client when you walk onto the site is all that experience by just surveying and looking right. over. This picture here we went to is a project of Brian's that is very dramatic, but uh, from on regards to horticultural engineering and the before and after picture. Uh, yeah, the, the homeowners, uh, you know, I guess on, on a whim, decided that they were going to clear their lot. That was a wooded lot at one point. 
yeah. um, and they wanted to improve their view, improve their usable space, uh, not realizing that if you don't take the next step, the, what you wind up with after a rainstorm, after several rainstorms. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were able to come in, uh, regrade the space, make some usable pathways to connect various areas. They have a little dining area now on the other side of that drainage swale we created for them. Uh, so it really makes a lot of sense out of a space that was really unusable. And uh, I think that those two pictures are quite illustrative of that. Isn't that picture on the right very park-like? Yes, and it is. It, doesn't yeah. that look great as far as, again, design on the human scale where people can meander through that uh -huh. area and walk around and just enjoy the setting as opposed to now, what they water. started that's with? A, that's a, uh, is that water? It's, not, it's, it's a dry creek bed. That, dry, that dry, dry creek bed to, okay. to improve the drainage, help I direct that storm water away from the uh -huh. site. Um, uh, but the uh, ribbon you see through there is a flagstone pathway we built. I see. Okay. Uh -huh. And if we can go to the next uh, slide on this. Again, some of the things that we like to do is in regards to small-scale landscaping, no matter how small, whether it's a townhouse, backyard, yeah. like we spoke about last year and earlier today in the show, to larger projects, what we like to do is to be able to go in and listen to the client and what they want to do and incorporate those ideas into that with the, uh, again, the horticultural engineering. The project on the left is, again, a, a builder had put a swale through the yard, but the, there was more space on the other side uh -huh. of that. And the client wanted to be able to use that. Uh, and so we were able to incorporate, again, for drainage purposes, a very mm -hmm. useful dry creek bed uh, and so that they could transition over. The middle one is one of Brian's very cool sunken patio. Yeah, a really difficult, uh, narrow site. Uh, it was a single-family home in Annandale, but uh, again, very narrow and uh, had a, an awkward slope cutting through the back. So we mm -hmm. were able to just uh, cut into the hill, retain it, and then create that nice little seating area at the bottom of their deck. And the one on the right uh, introduces, of course, color into the landscape, one of the basics, color, fragrance. But again, with the flocks that you see behind the, the uh -huh. Nandina there, movement, and we talked about right. that earlier. It's, again, a very interesting factor that's overlooked a lot in the landscaping on there. Well, now, what about when you've got, uh, uh, I'm sure that you uh, incorporate the fact that you said something very important. You listen. You listen. Absolutely. And many people don't listen right. close, and they want to go ahead and do what they want to do. But I like the idea you said, listen. And when they say they have uh, five kids or three children, and you have to, then you have to know their ages, right? Mm -hmm. Are they sandbox and swing age? Or are they basketball and... Uh, exactly. And, and, and yeah. In a well-designed space, you take into account growth. So as the family matures and ages, you know, an area that maybe was a sandbox then can become a raised garden. Mm -hmm. um, so again, intelligent design should right. take all that into consideration. And we do... Our philosophy, we pride ourselves on listening to the clients. Um, at the end of the day, we're there for a short period of time. They have to live there uh, for many, many years. i got to tell you a, a quick little story on myself. Um, I had nine children. They're all grown up and married now. But at any rate, when they were little bambinos, little kids running around, I chased them out of the yard, and uh, I said, get off my lawn, get off my lawn, get, get over in the church and play. And my wife hollered out the kitchen window, John, are we raising grass or are we, we raising children? <laughs> and it hit me right there. I said, okay, come on back, kids. Play all you want in the yard. And that's what you got to think about, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh -huh. it's the specific needs for the client because right. the neighbor will have something completely mm -hmm. different, different. Mm -hmm. and so you have to listen to what's, what that is. And again, before, uh, we can go to the next slide here too, but one of the things I'd like to say for the, re uh, the viewers and to hear is they can go to our webpage at www.gdiva.com to see even more information. Uh -huh. And also this year, we've just started uh, adding a Facebook page and they can find us on the Facebook with Grig oh, okay. Design. Rig Design, Inc. Uh, this is another outstanding example of horticultural engineering with elevation changes, grade changes, very little use. One of Brian's projects that came out fantastic, a great combination of material. And, and Brian, if you can. Uh, but just, uh, again, uh, another awkward slope. Um, this, this house, the homeowners had the front porch put on, and uh, there was absolutely no way to get from their driveway to their, to uh -huh. their new front door. Uh, so we were able to create uh, lots of different terracing. Uh, we were able to create landings and steps that gracefully brought them up to the front of the house, yeah. uh, thereby not winding their guests by the time they traversed that, that treacherous slope. So we, we think that turned out really nice. A uh, combination of Pennsylvania fieldstone, 
stacked, yeah. all fixed with mortar, so it appears dry set, uh, but it is very strong. It should outlast us all. Uh, and then Pennsylvania flagstone set in a random run pattern. Well, you know, Brian, what that picture or that slide reminds me of, and you might want to briefly talk about that, uh, those big, tall evergreens in front. Mm -hmm. Wasn't this winter brutal to some of the evergreens? And Absolutely. what did you guys, uh, let's talk briefly about that. I don't want to take a lot of your time up on that, but I think it's important mm -hmm. for people to know what should they do. Well, you know, one of the things that we saw and are still seeing, it wasn't cold damage this year. It wasn't it was desiccation or frozen uh, ground that was causing the damage that was seen in the spring this year. It was the sheer weight and structural damage right. to the plant. And we've looked at everything from some uh, Japanese, weeping Japanese red maple that uh, some clients have had for years and love, split them. And that many of them were four or $5,000 trees, just gone, split, to less expensive plants like arborvitas and right. um, Leylands that are just, the structure has just mm -hmm. split them. And many times we've looked at them and there's just not that much not that a lot we can do. We can, do. We, 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 we can guide them back together right. and hope for the best, but... Uh, but most of the time it's get rid of it. Wholesale and, change, and absolutely. Particularly when they're, when they're uh, out of the ground in the soil. Yes. Uh, I went to one guy's house, he asked me to come over and look at it. He was working like heck there with three other guys trying to stand it up. Mm -hmm. I said, Joe, uh, no, it's not going to survive. It's been out too long. Exactly. You know? exactly. Unfortunately. Yeah. Exactly. We've Couple seen a more. lot of that this year, more than ever before. Uh -huh. So if we could go to the next uh, slide on this. Got a couple more points here. Yeah. Okay. Um, again, one of the things we're talking about with the horticultural and engineering and intelligence site analysis is uh, talking with the client and intended end use, what the client wants to use it for. Traffic flow. And one of the things Brian's very good at and we both have, have learned to, to evaluate is unique client needs, which you alluded to just earlier, about uh, younger kids versus older kids or traffic exposure mm -hmm. and such. And the, oh, and, or else, in fact, some people say, well, I'm not a gardener. I play golf every weekend. Oh, okay, that's a different kind of plant mm -hmm. to put in there. Absolutely. Or I don't go golf, I love to garden. Then it's perennials and different, right? Mm -hmm. exactly. That's what you wait. Absolutely. Yeah. And those are all questions we would ask of our clients before we even started drafting, you mm -hmm. know, the first uh, draft of our designs. So um, if we go to the next slide, we can show you some uh, some examples of how that works for you. Um, the first picture there is actually a uh, reverse angle of that first patio that we saw. Uh, again, a nice uh -huh. townhome backyard. Um, Steve created that space um, with the Juliet balcony that cascades down to the flagstone patio uh, and it just it worked out really well. They were able to get many levels of entertaining in, in quite a small space. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was very interesting because they did have small children and the builder left them with two French doors but just and they were literally about five, six feet off the, the ground. Of course it was set up for a balcony but they had room for a patio and they wanted patios. So we were able to connect from the master bedroom over to the kitchen area so they could sit out there for morning coffee, come down uh -huh. the s sideways and onto this very nice uh, random run flagstone patio set in concrete with a dry stack stone sitting wall, mortared cap. And that used, well, they used that for not only sitting but buffet tables and entertaining yeah. and such. There you go. Uh, the middle one is again just the evaluation of drainage and a secluded area. And then the one on the right, which is a lot of engineering, was one Brian did a number of years ago out in uh, the Gainesville mm -hmm. area. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just uh, you know, a way to navigate around from the garage to the large patio we built. Uh, again, difficult elevation changes. Um, how are we going to uh, traverse that slope? And we did it again with a series of landings to an elevated patio, which then kind of just rolled off into the, into the woods. So it was, it, was, it was a very interesting challenge, but we were able to tie it all together. And many times, as Brian just pointed out, you can do a lot with a series of landings and steps for a grade mm -hmm. change to make a much easier transition from point A to and point you B. You put a lot of, of, of character into the landscape instead of just filling the place up with ivy on a steep bank. Oh, you know, that's, yeah. that's, that's, uh, that's terrible. It, it takes over the world. It, it, it is terrible. And what we like to do and pride ourselves on, again, is using the lay of the land and interpreting the lay of the land uh -huh. and incorporating that into uh -huh. the, the, instead of trying to work against it, work with it. And many times you can deliver a much better product uh, for the client and a value-added client, a value-added product.